Yes, yeah, so let's continue from where we left off. So, um, as I was saying, um, doctors think that depression are uh, of two phases, which is the independent axis in a bipolar spectrum, rather than the opposite, which is the mania and depression are two independent axes. Because all them conditions are very dire situations. They are really not a good situation that you have to be in or you, 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 you find yourself in as a patient. And that's why the doctors have separated them as manic and depressive mode. Two separate different axes, independent axes that comes in a very trembling approach. So the mixed state can put a patient at greater risk, greater risk, greater risk of suicide, suicidal risk, greater of suicide risk, the patient at greater risk. So you see, when it comes to the mixture, when a patient can be manic and at the same time depressive, when it fluctuates like that, it puts them at a greater risk of suicide, which is very serious. And if your family member, if your friend of your community member is suffering from this, please make sure they get admitted and they get the help that they need because you don't want a situation whereby you come the next day, there are no more because they kill themselves. This is a very critical situation that we have to learn and understand that this disease is deadly. So in Africa, if you see any symptoms like that, if you are watching this video and try to assimilate, understand what I'm talking about, please check out for the symptoms and make sure you give the person support and refer them to your doctors and let them get, get diagnosed and treated diagnosed and treated please so feeling depressed on its own is a risk factor but when coupled with increased energy agitation and impulsivity impulsivity the patient is more likely to engage in dangerous behavior including self-injury or suicide that is the most appalling incident that you want to experience and to all my fellow um, mental health practitioners out there, you know that this manic and depressive mood which goes concurrent with our patients are very dangerous because the depressive mood is dangerous and the manic face gives them the energy to act on it, gives them the energy to be very dangerous in behavior, give them the energy to self-harm, give them the energy to kill themselves. So please, if there is anybody out there who is even experiencing anything like that, that hasn't really come out to be very serious, please book an appointment to see your GP. Let them send you for an admission for evaluation, assessment, and treatment, please. Hypomania. And um, hypomania is a lowered state of mania that does little to impair function or decrease quality of life. In hypomania, there is less need for sleep and both goal-motivated behavior and metabolism increase. Though the elevated mood and energy level typical of hypomania could be seen as a benefit, mania itself generally has many undesirable consequences, including suicidal tendencies. So the hypomania can be good, but it still has that consequences, including suicidal tendencies. So it's all not a good condition 
whether hypermania or hypomania because it's, it, it all gives you the abnormally elevated energy. It gives you the uncontrollable strength. It gives you the symptoms of uncontrolled thoughts and condition of grandeur, suicidal thoughts that wouldn't help any patient to leave. So it's a situation whereby people out there to help those that are in that. Don't say, oh, the person is behaving funny and therefore they are, they are intentionally doing it or they are deliberately doing it. It's a state of mind that needs to be checked out, that needs support, that needs help. So if you are there and you try to support that person, maybe you can save them you can be a, a, a star. You can be an angel. Save them from killing themselves. So please, this is a critical condition that we don't joke with it. It's a condition that needs support, that needs help, that needs permanent supervision by our professionals. Associated with disorders. A single manic episode is sufficient to diagnose bipolar one disorder. Hypomania may be indicative of bipolar disorder or cyclothemia. However, if prominent psychotic symptoms are present for a duration significantly longer than the mood episode, a diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder is more appropriate. So you see, when it comes to the mood, depression, and mania, there is a combination of affective disorders that can be psychiatric elevated mood. So it means that this diagnosis can be schizoaffective disorder, which means that there's a combination of psych psychopath or psycho, you know, when it comes to mental health, there's a combination of mania, depression, and then you have all these symptoms playing up, hallucination, um, condition of grandeur, thinking you, 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 you are, your thoughts are racing, you have suicidal thoughts, you have so many symptoms that can preoccupation with thoughts, you know, self-neglect, and all these delusion of grandeur. It is very worrying. So it's a situation whereby we need to push all these people out there into the hospitals for them to be admitted because it's not something that you can treat at home. It's something that needs an urgent treatment with uh, the multidisciplinary team to make sure that that person gets some therapeutic support that will help them to come out of it or to manage their diagnosis. So I'll carry on to this. So the several types of mania, such as kleptomania, pyromania, are related more closely to obsessive compulsive disorder than bipolar disorder, depending on the severity of this disorder. So they are talking about kleptomania and pyromania those who still pill fire in shops and all that, it's more associated with obsessive compulsive disorder. It's not linked to um, bipolar or this manic conditions. It's not. For instance, someone with kleptomania who suffers from impulses to steal things such as pencils, pens, and paper clips is better diagnosed with a form of OCD. B12 deficiency can also cause characteristics of mania psychosis. So you see, some of these things are very biological, but in Africa, we think all the kleptomanias are maybe witchcraft sort of related, or maybe they've been cursed, or there's some kind of spell or malediction on them from their family or from their friends or something like that. But B12 deficiency can actually cause the characteristics of mania and psychosis. 
So you see, it's not all that um, all that that are negative in Africa are caused by riches. Some of them are clinical, biological. 